Hello, my friends. Hello, hello, mighties. I hope I have my Facebook friends here. I have. Here we are from Superior, Wisconsin, and it's Monday night. <laughs> my name is Joe at Calabrese, and I'm here to do one thing and one thing only every Monday night at 8 o'clock Eastern time, and that is to talk to you about homeopathy. Yes, I'm back in Florida. <laughs> I got in yesterday. Hello. Hi from Chico. Good evening. Hello from Kansas. Hi, Leanne. It's wonderful to see Christine. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Hello from Missouri and from Toronto and from Maryland. It's great to see everyone. These are my mighties here that I'm looking at, and these are the Facebook Live folks, and it's really great to see you all. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Joette Calabrese, and this is what we do. And for those who do know me, welcome, my dear friends. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, let's see. I'm looking at some things here that I would love to address. So let me uh, let me just think that through for a minute. But tonight we are going to talk about pain. Carrying on, right? Every week we're talking about pain, and so uh, the last several Mondays, and I love this subject because it touches everyone, right? It's gonna it's going to affect everyone at some time in their life. So we really need to get a handle on it. Now in conventional medicine, what is done is they just squelch that pain. They subdue it. And uh, look, if someone is um, in the last moments of death or homeopathy is not acting or the person has no choice that they know, know, do not know any better than you know, pain relievers can be, mm, what's the word I'm looking for, can be, uh, well, obviously they're relieving, but they can be um, uh, something that is, is uh, relieves uh, the suffering of humanity. Uh, they can be a godsend. But we have something often, not always, often works even better. Why? Because when we're talking about pain that is, that happens again and again, so the person needs to take something for it, or um, if the pain is, uh, we're not talking about end of life or severe long-term chronic pain that is, um, has, has not responded to homeopathy. If we're talking about situations that are, um, let me step back. I'm, 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 I've got another idea and I'm not thinking it through properly. So please excuse me while I gather my thoughts. We want something that regardless of where the person is, it is worth a try. Let's start with that. Okay. I'm going to tell you a story that happened to me that was really interesting. I think, of course, it's always more interesting when it happens to you, right? But it's interesting be for another reason, because it was so, the response was so quick. My husband and I were reading in bed one night, and I, out of the blue, for no reason at all, had nothing, there was no reason for this to happen. I got severe pain in my lower back. That's what we're going to be talking about tonight, is the back. In my lower back that was, was directly over both kidneys. The pain was, came on quickly. It was extraordinary, and all I could think of was that I needed something to press against it. 
something hot, something warm. So I first asked my husband if he would just press on my lower back, on a fist, pressing as hard as he could on both kidneys. And then I said, let's try hot water bottles. It was helping a tiny bit. It wasn't relieving it. It was just giving me a little comfort. So let's try two hot water bottles and hold them in place and press them as hard as you possibly can. So I'll bet many of you, here we go, Leanne, my dear. <laughs> Craving pressure and heat is a specific medicine, my friends. I want you to remember that. It is a very specific medicine that, that can be downright magical. So I know, of course, this medicine. It's MAGFAS, magnesium phosphoricum. Now, had I not had homeopathy at that moment in time, I would have, you know, if it had been 50 years ago when I knew nothing about homeopathy, I, if it had persisted for some time, I would have found myself in the emergency room. The pain was that extreme. And I would have been at the mercy of an industry, the pharmaceutical industry, the drugs that would have been administered. But I know homeopathy. And this was even those many years ago, I knew that homeopathy would likely address it. So I took MAGFAS 6X. Now, that's a cell salt, but it's a cell salt, just as an aside, parenthetically, let me tell you that MAGFAS 6X, MAGFAS 12X, MAGFAS 200C, MAGFAS 1M, MAGFAS 10M are all cell salts. Just because it's a low number doesn't mean that it's a cell salt. And the reason I bring that up is just so that you don't have confusion with this as we move along. Still a cell salt. But in 6X, it's most noted as a cell salt. In other words, it has its popularity in the 6X potency. So I call MAGFAS MUGFAS. Because if you get four pills of MAGFAS and put it into a mug of hot water and stir it and take a sip and wait a few seconds and take another sip, and wait a few seconds and take another sip, and you keep doing this, it often relieves pain that is characterized by two conditions. And they are craving heat and craving pressure. So I did that. I took MAGFAS and hot water, mm, nothing, got another mug full. So I sipped, put it down, sipped, put it down. The pain was very, very intense. Did it again. Four pills, MAGFAS 6 in a mug of hot water, making it into MUGFAS. And I sipped again. No change. But I still craved that pressure and that heat against both sides of my back, right, right at the side of my kidneys. So I said, okay, we're going to a 30th potency. So I went to MUGFAS. MAGFAS. 30. I think it was a 30X that I had at the time. A C would have probably done the same thing. And I put that into a different mug of hot water, took a few sips, Mwah. and it was gone within minutes. Minutes. After suffering this for, mm, I don't know, an hour maybe. Now, it came back again. I, I, I carried on and read. I was very relieved. I carried on, picked up my book and started to read. And then it came back again. This time, which is not uncommon when we use homeopathy, the pain was instead of an excruciating eight, which is what it was before, it came back and it was about a five. I warmed up my mug, hot water, four pills of mug fast, 30x, put it in the water, stirred it once and started sipping, and that was the end of it, and it was gone. Now, my friends, what was that? Was that a muscle cramp? Was it my kidneys? Um, I've never had that since. And um, how long ago was that? 
I remember which house we were in. It had to have been at least 23 years ago. It's never come back again. So, somebody said it could be Hypericum. Yes, it could have been Hypericum. But because of that desire for pressure and heat, it distinguished it from Hypericum. Can Hypericum have those characteristics? Yes, but Magfoss, 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 um, makes it much more specific to that medicine. Those conditions, those characteristics are specific for the use of Magfoss. Yes, and it worked and it uprooted. Thank you, Francine. You're absolutely right. It uprooted it. Now, could it have happened again? Possibly. Was it my kidneys? Who knows? Was it a muscle spasm? It's often, MAGFOS is often used for muscle spasms. We can use it for leg cramps. We can use it for, um, okay, friends, what else can we use this for? I know you're all going to know. Love homeopathy win. That's absolutely right. While you're writing that down for me, did I finish each mug full? Uh, the first mug I did, the 6X, the first time, no change. That's why I did it again. I thought, well, it just needed more, 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 more frequency. Um, so I did it again, and, only the, and it's still two whole mugs of hot water with mug fast 6. Then when I went to the 30, I didn't need to drink the whole mug. I didn't need to sip it. Menstrual cramps, menstrual cramps, menstrual cramps, menstrual hiccups, menstrual cramps. Sciatica sometimes, sleep, and you're right, sleep, it can actually help with sleep. Mug fast can help with sleep. Childbirth, yes, it's great for childbirth. Absolutely. Muscle cramps, spasms, hiccups. So now when we think of cramps, we think of menstrual cramps, right? We think of leg cramps. So I want you to remember mag fast, mag fast, mag fast, uh, side stitch, yep. Um, growing pains in little ones, absolutely, because growing pains are a type of cramp, right? Baby teething, toothache, heart pain, allergies, angina. You go, Cheyenne. <laughs> angina. It's great for angina. Um, I've got another really good one for angina, too, if MAGFAS does not help with the angina. My friends, this is a writer downer. This could change um, someone's life completely. It helped my father enormously. It's simisifuga. Simisifuga is a great remedy for angina. Absolutely. Facial neuralgia, magfas. Absolutely. Yes. Colic. Hiccups, because it's a spasm. Hiccups are a spasm. So think of spasms. Any spasm, think of magfos think of it in a mug because it works a little faster it doesn't mean it won't work let's say you're in the car and you can't get to a hot mug a mug of hot water and you've got mug fos with you you just put the four pills in the mouth it's not a problem but it will work a little faster and sometimes more in depth if we put it in a mug of hot water Excuse me. So now let's say it's someone who has menstrual cramps and it's helping, but they need to keep taking it and they don't want to get up all night long and, and warm up that mug of hot water, keep the, get, get a fresh mug of hot water. So I actually think I wish I could call it thermofast, but that doesn't, you know, there's no alliteration. There's no, there's no connection to a thermos. Uh, because if you put a thermos of hot water with your four pills of MAGFAS in it and someone needs to take it through the night because it's helping with the menstrual cramps but they're not quite done or they might come back up again if they don't keep, carry on with it, you can keep a good thermos bottle, will stay hot, the water will stay hot in it for two or three days even. So you can keep that thermos right by your bedside. And then every time you need to, you just undo it. You can do it right in the night without turning the light on. You just feel for that, that thermos close by, open it up, take a swig, close it up, put it next to you, wait another couple minutes, open it up, take a swig, 
until you can go back to sleep again. It can be the same thing for leg cramps, et cetera, et cetera. Would it help if lower back pain gets tight in spasms? Do you know why? Do know? Do you know why? And don't know when and what will happen? I'm not sure I understand the question, but what? Yes, it is for spasms. Absolutely, yes. Back, legs, uh, uterus, um, eyes, hiccups. So it could be the whole thoracic area or the whole, excuse me, the whole throat area. Um, it could be. Um, think of spasms. It can be spasms anywhere, anywhere. Um, it is excellent for, you know, growing pains, leg cramps, etc. Okay. Okay, I am going to take another sip of water, if you don't mind. I had something very salty for dinner tonight. I made uh, facial tics, yes, as well. Yes, Cooper Metallicum for facial tics, but... Magfoss, especially if there are spasms, and particularly if they can, if they're painful spasms, doesn't have to be painful, but if they happen to be painful spasms, that can be very useful because, as you know, hiccups are not necessarily painful; they're just spasms. Kim says Magfoss by my bedside for night leg cramps works in minutes. You bet. Um, yes, absolutely. Let's see if we've got Boron's Cycles Uprooted Menstrual Cramps After Several Months. Those combination medicines from Boron, from OHM, from uh, um, Hahnemann, from Helios, the pharmacies that I have the most faith in, that I know well, those combination medicines from those particular there are some that have combinations of you know 20 remedies in one and ra that are all mixed together i would stay away from those maybe you could use it for an acute here or there but generally the, the companies that are like the, the manufacturing pharmacies that i like are the ones i just mentioned um those combination medicines can be really great don't shy away from them. Don't think that it's not good because you're going to end up proving the remedies. Look, we're using them until they work better, until they until the condition is somewhat improved or even completely improved. Normally, they're used for acute, so it's not something you're going to use forever. I used to think that that the combinations were not a good plan until you know how I decided to change my my thinking. It was my clients. They taught me. They taught me that, you know, I was classical at one time and I used to use one medicine to cover everything or at least in hopes that it would cover everything. And then my clients would come to me and say, yeah, I know you told me to use pulsatilla. I know that. But I have to tell you, I had these terrible menstruation cramps and I used uh, that combination from Highlands and it was great. Or I used the combination from whomever and it worked. Is that okay? And at first I would think, mm, I don't know, we shouldn't be mixing. We shouldn't be using more than one remedy at a time until after a while, people kept saying this to me, these kinds of things, you know, I had leg cramps or I got the, I got a cold and I needed to take something and they would add a couple different remedies or I had a broken leg and I had pain. Is it all right that I added this remedy and this remedy and this remedy in addition to the remedy that was supposed to be my constitutional? And I learned after a while, not only is it okay, but you were smarter than me, my dear friends. You, my clients, were smarter than I was because I believed you should never take more than one remedy at a time. Foolishness. Absolute foolishness. I'm not saying you should take many remedies simultaneously. Sometimes we do have to take a few. Sometimes we can get away with only one or two. But don't hold back because someone told you you should only take one remedy at a time. It's absolutely incorrect. <laughs> um, all right, let's see. Someone says, I'm no longer receiving notifications of the, well, just, um, I don't know how you would do that. I guess you have to make sure that you are on my email list. My son, a skeptic, worked for bad back spasms. You bet. Yes. Yeah, there we go. Somebody's already addressing it. Thank you very much for doing that. Um, all right. Highlands reformulated. There is less in the bottle. 
but you take less. Okay, that's interesting. That's really good to know. Highlands was purchased by a different company. I'm afraid I don't remember the name. I don't know much about them. I have heard good reports, so I'm happy to hear that. But uh, but that is something that, um, that is, is now different. Okay, so let's talk about back pain, okay? I'm going to get out my repertory by Robin Murphy. This is the fourth edition. Um, Meta Repertory. If you are um, at all serious about homeopathy, you need to own a repertory. If, you, if you're dabbling, that's all right. Dabble for a while and then um, join us in study groups, our gateway groups or classes, etc., and you become more and more uh, involved. So when I look up back, um, I'm on page 442 if you, ha if you happen to have this. If I look up back, here it is right here, back, okay? And then I look up uh, pain. Uh, let me just see here. Look up pain. That's this entire column here. Let me hold this up better. See that? Pain. Okay. A lot of remedies. See them all? Lots of remedies. I counted approximately, um, this is for general back pain. There were about 250 remedies from which to choose. Okay, so repertorize it and tell me which one it is when you have back pain. <laughs> you bet. It's very complicated. It needn't be that complicated. It is a repertory. This much information is a guidepost. It's a place to get started. It's where when, the, when we look up cramps, Cramping uh, legs, legs, cr cramps in the legs. If we look, were to look up legs and cramps, we would find that there are many, many remedies. Would there be 250? Mm, maybe not so many, maybe 180 or something. But when those homeopathic manufacturing pharmacies come up with a remedy that works beautifully for leg cramps, what they've done is they've gotten the remedies that are the most common commonly found useful commonly found useful you see how they're emboldened here some of the remedies are are in bold letters and caps that's how we know these are the ones that are the most likely to help the largest number of people most likely to help in most situations okay so what they did is they got for leg cramps they got the top remedies mixed them together put them in low potencies and told you to take them frequently that's how this works but when you don't have a remedy for back pain, for example, and all we've got is pain, back, general, we want to choose a medicine. Now I'm going to tell you, MAGFAS is a good one, particularly if it's a muscle spasm. Then you certainly want to look at MAGFAS, right? And we would take, I always, anytime I use MAGFAS, I always instruct my students and clients to use it in water, in hot water. Again, you can use it in pills, dry on the mouth, that's fine too, but it works faster and better in hot water. Not all remedies, just MAGFAS. Now, I have found, to be honest, FERMFAS works pretty quickly in hot water as well. And there may be others that I'm unaware of, but those are the two that I know of. So, generally, we use just dry pills in the mouth. Okay, so if I look at these remedies in here, we see under the most... Bold remedies, we see Arnica, Aluminum, Argentum Nitricum, Arnica, Burrita Carboticum, Belladonna, Bryonia, Calcarb, Calcfos. So we could keep going, Eupatorium, Calicarb, Lycopodium. I'm just kind of jumping around here, going down. Nat Self, lots of great remedies here. And they will be, we can narrow those down as we go through the repertory and go into more specific aspects of the pain in other words is it pain when coughing back pain when coughing is it pain when breathing that so we're looking so we can break it down and break it down and narrow it so i like magfoss but the next remedy i want you to think about when there's back pain especially if it's back pain that is as a result of overuse ah, look at you pamela Look at you, my dear. You wrote it right down before I even said it. Roostox helps my back for pain from overuse during cleaning, etc. 
You got it. Using the overuse of the back, working out too heavily, too strenuously, working, uh, cleaning the garage that took all day when you're unaccustomed to doing that kind of work, digging in the garden, sl driving in a car for hours and hours. Uh, my family just did that coming from New York, driving for hours and hours in one position. That's in a way that's overuse. It seems like how could that be over? Well, in a way it's overuse because you're seated in the same position for a long period of time and the body's not accustomed to staying in that one position for that period of time. And then that can sense the body feels as though it's overusing those muscles because we're not using other muscles. We're using the same muscles. Rus tax. Rus tax, my friends. Gorgeous medicine. What potency do we use it in? I love it in a 30. I love it in a 200. And I have even used it in a 1M. Now, Roost Tox is not just for back pain, but if it happens to be back pain, especially when you get up and you go, oh, my back, as you're getting up, oh, I can barely move. Oh, and sometimes we feel it elsewhere, in the shoulders or in the hips or in the, in the knees. Or sometimes it's not just in the bones, it could be the muscles, the bones, the tendons, it matters not. I love Roostox in 1M. Leanne, I agree with you. I'm gonna be honest with you. For those who are new, I encourage you to more often use it, more specifically use it in the 30 or 200. But if you're so bold, when it's really bad, 1M is amazing. And then I, I take it in 1M every once in a while. Sometimes I just wake up and I feel achy and beat up all over, even though I haven't done anything differently. I take one dose of Roostox 1M and we can call it a day and I move on to my day. Now, sometimes with Roostox, with that back pain, there's, a, there's an odd sensation that accompanies it. And that is that there's a sense of, there's a tired feeling in the area that's painful. I know that sounds strange to anyone who hasn't experienced that, but I've had many people tell me, my back feels so tired and achy. If they say tired and achy, and maybe the achiness, or maybe the tiredness is not even in the back, but often it can be, that is a call for roost tax. So let's say this person has this pain on a regular basis. See, I just told you about an acute pain, an acute sense where Roostox 1M, Jennifer says same thing, Roostox is amazing in 1M. When it's when I when I need it and I just need it now and it's done, it'll be over with and I won't have it again for many, many months. I love the 1M. But if it's someone who has chronic pain and it's oh my gosh, when they get up, they're achy and they're oh, everything hurts. It feels like they've been hit by a Zamboni. <laughs> yes, my friends, my Zamboni from Leanne and her group and others who I think are here today. If it feels like you've been hit, beat up, overdone it, now we're going to use Roost Tox twice a day. Roost Tox 30 twice a day. Roost Tox 200 twice a day. It doesn't mean twice a day, meaning at 10 in the morning and then at 11 in the morning. Twice a day, anytime we say twice a day, we mean we assume that you understand that it should be broken up by about 12 hours. So eight in the morning, eight at night. Next day, eight in the morning, eight at night. Next day, get up earlier, six in the morning, six at night. And it doesn't have to be exact at all. It does not have to be exact in the timing, but we want kind of a little bit of a rhythm. But how do you know our, when it's time to stop using it? Like I just described to you, when I need Roostox 1M, I take one dose and it's done. If it's done, does it mean I carry on and continue using it? it does not mean that. Remember, my friends, this is not, these are not supplements. These are not drugs. These are not vitamins. They're not essential oils. This is homeopathic medicine, which means that when the condition is gone, we halt the use of the medicine. If we don't do that and we carry on too long, then we can also, we can cause 
it to get worse for a while. Now, the Banerjee protocol for musculoskeletal is Rustax 30 and Bryonia 200 every two hours. Now, it's every two hours. Thank you, Kimberly, for bringing that up. It's every two hours because we're assuming this is pretty intense. If it's not intense and it's kind of a low level, mm, just every day, then I would do it twice daily. But if it's really severe, of course we're going to use it every two hours. Which brings me to the next medicine, but I... Excuse me, I've got just another minute and we can finish this off. I'm going to take a sip of my water. I made cream of mushroom soup tonight from dehydrated mushrooms. Maybe that's why I'm so thirsty. <laughs> I'm drinking a lot of water tonight. My next medicine is Bryonia. And I don't have a lot of time to talk about it, but Bryonia is amazing. Especially if Roostox doesn't act, you've already tried Magfos because because the characteristics were there better from or um, comfort from from pressure and heat, and that didn't act. And now you think it's Roostox, um, and that didn't help. Then you might want to go to Bryonia, or as some as one of the Banerjee protocols is, you can alternate or use Bryonia and Roostox. And I would use Bryonia in a thirty. I don't use Bryonia in a 200 for back pain regularly. I try to stay to a 30. So Bryonia is worse from movement. Rustax is worse from first movement better on, 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 on sustained movement. Bryonia is worse from any movement. All it takes sometimes is just the eyeballs to move. You can barely move your... That's when somebody tells me my back has gone out, meaning I can't, I can't, I got stuck. I can't have to stay on the sofa for weeks. That is generally bryonia, bryonia 30. And if it's very severe like that, where they're stuck on the couch, they cannot leave the, that, that piece of furniture, um, and they know that this happens and it's happened in the past and they know that they're not going to get anywhere unless they take a painkiller, then we're going to use Bryonia every two hours. And we could indeed use it with Roostox. I'm reading what you're saying. Some great stuff here. Thank you, Danielle. Ah, when I sprained my ankle, Bryonia was my best friend. Hi, Kathy. You bet. Ruta is great for a sprained ankle, but Bryonia is for the pain. Ruta is for is to is to is to move the 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 injury along. Um, yeah, using Bryonia right now says Carmen for pain between my shoulder blades. <laughs> so good, my friends. I'm gonna dash off. We're gonna carry on next week with pain. More pain next week as well so that we can really I want you to get a handle on this it is a very broad subject if you really want to know more about it i urge you to consider going to my learning center on my website and look at the course titled pain uh, we need to know these medicines you can probably do an awful lot just by owning a repertory joining a study group um, and treating your family, your friends, and your um, um, colleagues, neighbors, uh, pets, livestock, etc. And so with that, my friends, I say mm, love you all. Good night. Have a great week. See you next Monday. Bye.